Today we celebrate the feast of the martyrs of Rome, the first martyrs of Rome. Um, and uh, we're going to think about those people who laid down their life for the Lord and in this day and age who are still suffering and being persecuted uh, for love of Jesus. Their reward in heaven is great. Uh, let's formulate our intentions for today. Uh, what do you want to pray for? Who do you want to pray for? Uh, along with your intentions, uh, now I know many of us are praying just for an end to this COVID-19 stuff. We're just really getting tired of it. And, you know, there's some upsurges. We pray that, that, that we will continue to down surge, that, to go down and to eliminate this uh, scourge, this plague. We pray for those who have died that they may enter into everlasting life. We pray for those who are sick that they may be healed. We pray uh, for the rest uh, of the population that they may not be infected with it. We pray for a cure or a vaccine for it. Um, so along with your intentions, uh, my intentions is for today is for Nick and Cornelia Roach. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you choose the weak and make them strong in bearing witness to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, those who give their lives for you have an eternal reward in heaven. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the foundation of the church in Rome, for the Roman Catholic Church. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven, the saints who follow the footsteps of Christ. And since for love of him they shed their blood, they now exalt with Christ forever. Grant, O oh God, who consecrated the abundant first fruits of the Roman church by the blood of the martyrs, grant, we pray, that with firm courage we may together draw strength from so great a struggle and ever rejoice at the triumph of faithful love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits, acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or the sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being slain all the day long. We are looked upon as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Had not the Lord been with us when men rose against us, then would they have swallowed us alive when their fury was inflamed against us. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us. The torrent would have swept over us. Over us then would have swept the raging waters. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Broken was the snare, and we were freed. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The gospel is taken from the gospel of the day. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by waves. But he was asleep. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you terrified, O oh, you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. The men were amazed and said, what sort of man is this whom even the winds and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Lord, we are perishing. Save us. That's the word today. I got to ask you a question. Uh, are you kind of feeling that way in these days? It seems like uh, a lot of stuff is going on that is just, we feel like we're perishing between COVID and, and uh, racism and rioting and, and hatred and uh, a lot of fake news and a lot of bad news. Uh, it's really easy to focus on all the negative that's going on. Notice today, Jesus was asleep in the boat. He was asleep. We kind of feel sometimes that Jesus might be a little bit of a, asleep in our world right now. We, we can feel that way. But you know what? Jesus was soundly asleep because Jesus is God. And he says, I've got the whole world in my hands. I've got this. I even allow evil to happen in this world so that by my absolute power, I can bring a greater good out of it. God's grace is still at work. And the darker it gets, the lighter, the brighter the light of Christ shines in this world. Jesus did look at his apostles and say, where's your faith? Be calm. Calm the storms in your heart as well. That's what Jesus is saying to you and me today. It's easy to look at the world and have a storm going in our heart, a, a fear and, and worry about where we're headed and what's going on. And Jesus says, where's your faith? I'm God. There's no COVID-19. There's no act of violence. There's no riots. There's nothing going on in this world that's going to make me unrisen from the dead. Nothing is going to separate you from my love. I mean, I like this today from Paul. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor COVID-19, nor rioting, nor uh, d violence and difficulty, nor discrimination. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that comes to us in Christ Jesus the Lord. And it is only from this foundation that we're really going to be able to go out in this world and effect a difference in other people's lives. What's different about you Christians in the midst of this? We have our calm. Even a hurricane. You know, the hurricane winds are going crazy, right? This is like a hurricane in this world. But at the very dead center of a hurricane, it's absolute calm. And this is where we need to find the Lord. Jesus is God. Sometimes we, when we think of Jesus, we think about him just as a human being. Jesus before he became incarnate of the flesh, is the second person of the Trinity. Jesus is God, divine. He, he's been eternally begotten by the Father. Then he took flesh. He became man. 
Now he's God-man. Because he gave that sacrifice, we can especially know that he's going to walk with us. He entered into our human situation to say, I'm here. God isn't off to a distance. I'm here in your midst, and I continue to be here in your midst with the Holy Spirit. So yeah, it's our tendency to say, Lord, save us. We are perishing. But as men and women of faith, we need to say, Jesus, nothing on this earth makes you unrisen from the dead. Nothing in this earth takes you away, unestablish you you as king and lord of the universe. You have the whole world in your hands. Jesus, I trust in you. Let us now bring our prayers to the Lord. Trusting in God, whom the winds and the sea obey, we humbly turn to him with our prayers and petitions. For the church, may God inspire our leaders as true ministers of healing and calming of the storm, we pray to the Lord. For those who lead nations and people, may the Holy Spirit give them fortitude and courage and wisdom, we pray to the Lord. For those suffering in the storms of life, may the Lord bring them comfort through his body, the church. We pray to the Lord. For our community, all those joining us today, all those whom we pray for, may God bless us and keep us free from all evil. We pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, particularly those who have no one to pray for them. May they live forever in the joy of the heavenly kingdom and the calm of God's grace and love. We pray to the Lord. And we bring our own prayers to the Lord, as I stated at the beginning of Mass, for an end to this COVID-19 uh, pandemic and for uh, respect for life from conception to death. And let's take a few moments to, to bring what else, whatever else we want to pray for. We pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, we praise you for your kindness and ask you to hear the prayers of your family through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs poured out like Christ to glorify your name shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with the Holy Martyrs of Rome, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, says the Lord, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. At this time, we make a spiritual communion. Jesus, we thank and praise you for your love. I thank and praise you at this real mass that real graces go out to the people who are watching. Jesus, we accept you into our hearts. We give our hearts back to you. And as we unite ourselves to you, unite us to the Father. Unite us to the Holy Spirit, for the three of you are one. And bring us into the beautiful embrace of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Uh, just a reminder that tomorrow, uh, you know, uh, gather your kids and grandkids together so that uh, we can orient that mass towards our youth. And also, just a reminder that today is Tuesday. That means that uh, uh, a show, a, a Catechism in a Nutshell, an episode is going to be going up today, later today, probably around between 3 and, and 5 o'clock today. I do have a few things going on, so it might be more right like 5 o'clock. But please look for that Catechism in a Nutshell today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>